Okay, this recipe is for cheese scones, and because it's cheese scones, I've got some dry mustard. So in my bowl, I've got 250 grams of self-raising flour, and I'm just going to add half a teaspoon of mustard powder. It won't make the scones taste of mustard, but the mustard helps bring out the flavour of the cheese. So as I didn't sieve those two together, I'm just going to mix that in a little bit. And on my plate, I have 50 grams of butter and 75 grams of cheese. So I'm just going to roughly chop the butter into the flour. It doesn't have to be in tiny little bits and you shouldn't really spend a long time over it. And then we're going to rub in. So rubbing in, make your fingers into a scoop down to the bottom of the bowl, pick up a little bit of butter and a little bit of sugar, sorry, a little bit of flour like we've done before, lift it up slightly and turn the bowl and keep going until you can't see any more lumps of flour. This won't really look like breadcrumbs, like a pastry would, because we've only got 50 grams of butter in here uh, to 250 grams of flour. But there should be a slight change in the colour and we want all of the fat to be rubbed in. And you can see, when I'm turning the bowl, I'm keeping my hands inside, turning the bowl around to just make sure that I'm getting all of the butter rubbed into the fat. Okay, and it just keeps your work top a bit tidier. When you think that you might have succeeded in getting all of the butter rubbed in and there will be no more large lumps left, just shake the bowl and any large lumps of fat will come up to the top and I have no more lumps of fat in there. I can see the flour has started to change colour so I'm just going to wash my hands and my hands, all the flour or the vast majority of the flour is at my fingertips and not on the palms of my hands where it's hotter. Okay now I've got clean hands I just need to grate the cheese. Biggest size of the grater and I'm just going to do that quickly so that I can put it into the bowl. So remembering when you're grating, keep your hand flat. Don't hold your cheese like this. You're much more likely to get grated fingernails in it and to grate your fingers. If you keep your fingers flat, you can push the cheese into the grater, even a tiny little bit like that, you can just push it into the grater and grate all of your cheese. I've got a tiny little extra bit here when I weighed out, so I'm just going to keep that bit for the minute to put on the top. So all the cheese that's grated goes into my bowl. Got that little bit left and I'm just going to mix that up with my fingers so that the cheese is evenly through the flour and then I need to add my milk. I have 125 mils of milk and I've just made a little well in the centre. I'm not going to put all the milk in, I've put nearly all the milk in but I've just kept a tiny little bit back because I don't want to make this too wet a mixture. And as I stir with my knife, you can see this is quickly forming to a dough. So I'm just going to scrape my knife off, put my fingers in and see if I mix this, if I think it will go together. And I don't think this needs any more milk because it feels quite wet in the middle. And I just need to get all of that flour into my dough. Right, 
So I've got all of the flour mixed up with the milk, a reasonably clean bowl and a ball of my scone mixture. Now I haven't put any flour on my worktop, that's just flour that came out of the bowl because you don't want to add too much extra flour to this mixture. So I'm just going to knead it lightly and then I can roll this out and shape it. And when I'm trying to shape it, I am going to put a little bit of flour underneath just to make sure it doesn't stick. But I don't like to use a rolling pin on scones because what tends to happen is people roll them too thin. So your scones need to be one and a half centimetres deep. So I would say that was about the first to the first knuckle on my thumb is probably about two centimetres deep. So a little bit thinner than this, but I don't want to make these too thin. If you think about scones that you buy in the shop, when you get them, when you buy them, they're about that deep. They're not going to go that deep if you've rolled these out like rich tea biscuits. So I'm just going to pick a cutter and cut as many scones as I can from this first batch. And make sure that you do put these as close together as possible because like anything else, the first time you roll a scone is the best mixture. So I've put those onto a grease tray and now I'm just going to carefully flatten this down again. But I want them to be about the same thickness. I don't want the next ones to be a lot thinner because if they're a lot thinner, they are going to cook more quickly and I want all of these to cook through at the same time. So at the moment I've got six scones there. I think I'll be able to get one more from there. So that will be seven. I've got seven and then this is not quite going to be enough mixture if you look at it. So that's not going to be quite enough mixture so that is going on my baking tray and that one is the blob. Very often when you make scones you end up with a little bit of mixture at the end which isn't quite big enough and it's your blob. It will be the first one eaten normally when they come out of the oven. The little bit of milk that I've got left I am just going to brush the tops of these scones, help them brown, even the blob. So I'm just going to brush the top of the scones and then the tiny little bit of cheese that I had left. It's not a lot but I'm just going to grate a little bit of cheese over the top of these scones. Uh, you don't have to do this if you don't want to, if you want all your cheese inside the scones, that's absolutely fine. But I like to have a little bit, or when I've grated it, if I'm making cheese scones, I like to keep a little bit for the top. And as you can see, grating it on there, most of it has ended up on the baking tray. So I'm just going to pop as much cheese as I can back on the top of my scones. And then these need to go into a hot oven. So I've picked up as much of the cheese as I can. I've got these great um, glazed. These are going into a hot oven, 220 degrees, which is gas mark 7, and they're going in for 12 to 15 minutes. And what I want to see is that they're nice and golden brown when they are cooked. Okay, so the scones have had 12 minutes in the oven. They're a nice golden brown colour on the top. Um, I can feel they're a little bit soft around the sides, so I think I might give them just the extra three minutes. But we want a really nice golden brown around the top. Okay, the 
cheese biscuits have had an extra three minutes. So they are done. They're, oh, they sound hollow if you tap them. They're nicely risen and golden brown. So that's the cheese scones.